Well, what a way to start off 2022 the right way. The New Year's Six, the rest of the New Year's Six games are done. I'm not going to talk about the, the Citrus or Outback Bowls here. I would have had I, you know, did a preview for both those games, but I did not do a preview for either of those games. Uh, but congratulations to all the other bowl winners, you know, and stuff like that that we didn't get to talk about over the past two, and a, two or three weeks or so. Congrats to everybody. There's still one more bowl game left on Tuesday, but we're not going to talk about that either here on the show. Well, we got to talk about the New Year's Six, man. The rest of the New Year's Six the playoffs did not deliver like I had thought it was going to. And instead, New Year's Six did deliver. We're talking Peach Bowl first. Now, this was a Thursday night game. Uh, I did catch the highlights for this later, but I did miss this game. I, I actually missed it. I know. I was taking years of business that day, so um, and that took far longer than I wanted it to take, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so Michigan State came back from a 21-10 deficit with a late pick six to seal the comeback, you know, after Peyton Thorne throwing three huge touchdowns, two of them going to Jalen Reed in this game. And of course, you know, Nick Patty, the guy who was supposed to be playing um, in place of Kenny Pickett, got hurt. So Davis Bevel came in, and he, and he played all right. He played all right, but it, it just wasn't good enough to stave off this comeback by Michigan State. And Mel Tucker, gotta, you got you to gotta be happy for him, man. We all, I, I originally thought that, you know, the, this was what was going to happen. It was 21 to 10 at one point. You know, looked like Pitt was going to dominate. And, I, I mean, we all got proved wrong. I mean, I personally thought, you know, Michigan State's defense, you know, was not <laughs> going to get it done in the passing, at least in the passing game. But they, they did their job. They did their job. And the offense packed them up. The offense backed them up greatly. Sure, Pitt went down to their third string quarterback, but I mean, hey, it is what it is, man. Michigan State finishes the season with 11 wins, a lot of momentum. Uh, this Michigan, I mean, both these teams are going to be really, really intriguing next year. I mean, I can tell you that right now. This is a preview for 2022, in all honesty. This is a preview for the 2022 season with some of these games here. I mean, there, there's some talent on both of these teams. And then New Year's Day. Oh, what a, what a beautiful New Year's Day it was. The triple header was just beautiful. Oklahoma State, Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, Notre Dame, unfortunately, you know, continues to lose in New Year's or college football playoff or New Year's Day, New Year's Eve type bowls, the, you, you know, the big time bowl games. They continue to lose these type of games. And so, you know, Marcus Freeman in his head coaching debut, unfortunately, it did not, it did not go well. You know, Notre Dame had a 28 to seven lead with Jack Cohn having, what, four or five touchdown passes in this game. And, I mean, the, 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 this just was just inexcusable by Notre Dame. I mean, you're letting Spencer Sanders put up 490-plus total yards on you? I mean, there, there was just some botched things in this game for Notre Dame that they should have taken advantage of. They had two, they, they forced two fumbles in this game. He forced two fumbles, and that didn't help. The, the, the Irish only scored very late. Like, the game was pretty much out of reach by this point. You know, Oklahoma State had a nine-point lead, and they only scored late in the second half. We're talking late in the fourth quarter, and there was just a terrible fourth down call as well very late in this game. And Mike Gundy and company riding off into the sunset, they should be getting the Tostitos, but there is but now you gotta get a PlayStation, so you know. Instead of grabbing Tostitos, you'll be grabbing a PlayStation. Oklahoma State. Congrats to a what a huge win for Oklahoma State. Devastating for Notre Dame though. But they can't you know, Notre Dame cannot cannot, you know they, they can't let, you know, the um, the media get to because I know what people are going to say. Oh, well, Notre Dame, they should be invited to these big time bowl games, yada, yada, yada. And we hear this excuse every year, but I mean, Notre Dame's good enough. They're good enough to give us a game like this, man. They are good enough to give us a game like this one. In the Rose Bowl. Oh boy, what a Rose Bowl it was. 
Utah and Ohio State delivered. You know, Jackson Smith Najiba had a performance of a lifetime. He had a bad fumble, though, but he had a performance of a lifetime with 347 yards receiving. You know, C.J. Stroud, he, he's been proving me, you know, you know, again, we, we knew that we knew in the days coming up to this game that, you know, Smith and Wilson were going to be out. Or, uh, wow, did I say Smith? I meant, I meant, I meant Olave. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I meant Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson were going to be out, not, not Smith. Uh, so, you know, C.J. Stroud, it looks like he's going to be having a lot of guys to be throwing it to next year. I mean, if guys like Marvin Harrison Jr., yes, Marvin Harrison Jr., I did not know Marvin Harris had a son. <laughs> um, he and he caught three touchdowns for the Buckeyes, and I mean, my goodness, five seventy three passing for this man, C.J. Stroud, looking like you know, look like somebody that could be doing a lot of dangerous things next year. And I mean, Utah, it, it's it's a bit of a devastating result because I mean they lost Cam Rising. But, you know, Britton Covey, who I thought originally was not going to be playing in this game. I mean, Britton Covey had a touchdown, took it back. You know, he took it back for a, uh, ready, he took a kickoff return back for a touchdown. I mean, Cam Rising played well until he got knocked out of the game. Bad hit injury. My goodness. Ugh. Uh, and Bryson Barnes, you know, he, he came in late. He was a walk-on who came in late. He did well enough just to toss a touchdown, uh, you know, keep... Utah ahead for a moment, and I mean, man, again, this game was wild. There was like five touchdowns in the span of three minutes of game time. That's how wild this game was, and unfortunately, it kind of ended anticlimactically with Ohio State driving down the field, um, Utah not using any of their timeouts. Again, this is the same. This is the same kind of thing that happened to Notre Dame with terrible clock management. They had three timeouts, the Utes did, and they used none of them. None of the timeouts were used, and Ohio State, you know, with like 12 seconds to go, was able to kick a field goal, put a dagger in it, and win the Rose Bowl. And it's kind of sad that a game like this had to, you know, come down to such an anticlimactic ending. You know, it is what it is, but what a Rose Bowl it was. I loved every second of it. At least the first 59 minutes at 48 seconds. You know, I loved every second of that until the last 12 seconds. And then the Sugar Bowl, which was what I wanted for the College Football Bowl. If I wanted the playoffs to have this type of game, a ugly defensive game in which Matt Corral, you know, a lot of people are going to, you know, get all in their controversies about it with Matt Corral getting injured. Uh, you know, he. I believe he was injured what his leg or his ankle or something like that. You know, I mean, he came out and he played, you know, he played with these guys for one last time. And although it didn't end the result he wanted, you know, with him getting injured, it is what it is, man. Hopefully he's okay at the NFL. Hopefully Cam Rison's okay too because, I mean, my goodness, that was definitely a concussion, you know, definitely a concussion. Um, but... For the, for the other guys on Ole Miss, uh, this was not a good performance. We're talking Ole Miss had a new kicker that debuted in the Egg Bowl, and he missed two kicks so bad. Like, both of those kicks were so terrible, I just want to cry on how bad they were. <laughs> like, college kickers. Hashtag college kickers. That's how bad it was, man. And Luke Altmaier, the backup quarterback, he did all right. He did all right, but all right wasn't good enough when you got J.T. Woods picking him off twice, taking one of them back for a pick six, and Abram Smith also ran all over the Soul Miss Rebels defense to the tune of 156 yards, at least that's what I read off the stat line, and I, I, don't, think, I, don't, think he, I don't think he ran for 156 I think he might have added one more run after that, but I'm not sure. But I know it was at least 150 plus yards. And Sugar Bowl, low scoring type of game. You know, both defenses played spectacular for the most part. Ole Miss made more mistakes, though. The Big 12 champions win the Sugar Bowl. 
go ahead and get get your diabetes, Baylor. You deserved it after all of that. You know that has happened to this Baylor Bears. You know, organize or rather this organization, this school over the past few years. You know, with all the controversies. I mean, this is a good for them. This is good a good way to start 2022 for them. They piggybacked off of 2021, the success they had, and they're continuing it in the 2022. And man. What a great set of games we got today. We got three good games. We got a game, you know, to end 2021 in the Peach Bowl. That was great. And now a lot of people are going to be like, well, well, let's use let's use these um, New Year's Six games as an example to, you know, get that 12-team playoff. Look, I'm open to a 12-team playoff. I just don't really want it. I, I I think I think I should clarify that. I th- I, don't, I don't think I've really clarified that. Is that yeah, a 12 team playoff is nice. Yeah, I think it could happen. I think it might happen. I think it will happen. But do I want it? Do I think that there's 12 teams deserving of a national championship? No. <laughs> that that's really my stance on things and that that stance will not continue to change. And that that go that goes for all levels. Do I think that there are you know however many teams you know in the FCS? Um, you know, I don't talk about Division One. I don't talk about Division Two or Division Three or anything on this channel. Do I think there are twenty four teams in the FCS deserving of a national championship? No. Are there going to be twenty four teams that play for a national championship anyway? Yes. Could the FCS playoffs expand? Yes, because there were talks about that, but that's I we're not talking about the SS right now. We're talking about the New Year Six. And we're talking about the impact of the New Year Six on these, you know, playoffs and the expansion talk continues to grow. Personally, I don't think there's gonna be anything to do with the contract. We could keep talking about it each and every year, but I just don't think the current contract will be modified right now. Um, it's not going to be modified, probably, because I mean, the university presidents and ADs can't seem to get it together, and, and these commissioners, these conferences can't get it together to where it can be modified. You know, take the small steps first if you want to expand. Let's expand the eight first. That's really the first step. But people can't seem to agree on that. That's really the that's really the first step. That's what the FCS did way back when. You know, they started at four. And then they eventually went to 8. Then they eventually went to 12. Then they eventually went to 16. Then they eventually went to 20. And now they're at 24. So, you know. Again, it you have to take it slow with baby steps. I, I don't understand the argument for 12 right now. I, I can see 12 maybe in the future. But not, not just yet. Not just yet. So, we'll see. We'll see how everything goes the uh playoff expansion and everything like that we'll continue to talk about it throughout the coming months but i only have three more videos covering college football season with you all that is the fcs national championship the preview and the recap of said game and then the cfp or rather four videos excuse me um, the cfp national championship preview and recap and then that's it that's it for the season so um and then we'll keep on going you know with other content on the channel so for that we're gonna get on out of here we're gonna skedaddle and we're gonna get this up um you know it's gonna be january 2nd wherever you are it's probably already january 2nd if you live on the east coast that are gonna be watching this so this will be the first upload of the day we'll have the second upload late tonight uh it'll be like 10 o'clock at night you know for our second upload of the day which will talk college basketball, and again, like I said in my, um, like I said in my uh, update video for January, it's gonna be a busy month. So, let's do this. Congrats to all the bowl winners. Congrats to do your six winners. You all earned your victories, and to everybody else, good night, and I will see you again tomorrow. Take care, everybody.